Power dia. Bengkel lelu apa orang? Power dia. Ha. Power dia. Siwa dia. Allah ibag sikal wah bekon dulu na. Normal aku kagel lagi ya. Sure normal lah untuk dua orang nak pergi. So guys, the reason I asked them for power petrol is because Triumph recommends 95 octane plus for the Daytona because of its high compression engine. So if you want me to make a video on why high octane fuel is required for these kind of bikes, I'll make a separate video for that because there are a lot of things to tell you. Uh, this video is not about that. So somehow I can manage with normal petrol only for short distances that too if you're not ripping the bike so if you're riding calm it's still fine that you can use uh, normal petrol but if you are doing proper performance testing or doing hardcore riding you will have to put high octane fuel so like i said if you want me to make a video on it i will do it also are you noticing any change in this video so i'm using the normal view now so usually when I ride bikes like this, I will use super view mode. Why? Obviously you know the reason. Look at the view. You can either see the road or if I bend down, you can see the dash, not both. But in super view mode, you can see everything. So this is the main reason I don't prefer normal view. Because you won't be able to see the dash if I'm looking at the road. But in this video, I'm gonna make a standing video. So that's still fine. So as the title says, this video is about my Daytona 675R. I'm gonna tell you everything about it. All right, folks, where do we begin now? I've taken my bike to some random place. I don't know whose uh, property is this, but it looks cool and calm. No disturbance at all. So just take a look at this beautiful Daytona 675R, folks. What do you think? So like I have already told you, the front looks like uh, exactly Night Fury. Gorgeous looking motorcycle, isn't it? With the arrow exhaust compensating its beastly mode. I think it's perfect. So first of all guys, uh, this is the last of the last variants in the Daytona series. So the Daytona series actually began back in 2006. So after 2006, when they after they launched Daytona 675, uh, they made a revision in 2009 and 2010, 2011. And uh, 2011 is where they introduced the Daytona 675R. So before there was no R, only the Daytona 675. So after 2011, I think they revised uh, both uh, 675 and 675R in 2013 again. So again after 2013, it's in 2014 that they made uh, ABS as standard equipment and they introduced quick shifter and uh, slipper clutch to the engine. So mine is a 2015 model. So the last changes they made was in 2014. Uh, not major changes, major changes were made in 2013. So this model is actually from the 2013 guys. Though it's 2015 made, um, we call it 2013 model actually. 13 to 16 is where the last series of the Daytona 675 uh, ended up. So 14 is when it got ABS, quick shifter and slipper clutch. So this is the 15 model, the last and the last of its kind the Daytona 675 series ended in 2016 because in 2017 BS 4 norms came and then they pulled the plug out of uh, Daytona 675 so there are no more Daytona 675s it was stopped in 2017 this was a very well recognized uh, bike in the 600cc segment especially after it was gone so when it was there people didn't know the importance of a Daytona when they pulled the plug of it and the whole world started talking about it like oh my god Daytona is gone Daytona is gone people who never 
had any idea about Daytona, started speaking about Daytona, I don't know why. So that's how things are, aren't they? When you have them in front of you, you won't know the value and when they're gone, that's when you start talking about it. So I'm lucky to have a 2015 Daytona 675R. So this is the last of its kind. I'm so lucky to have it. So to tell you about this bike, um, I won't uh, go back to history again. You can, you have Wikipedia, you have Google for that. So this particular uh, model 675R, so in the standard Daytona, uh, you don't get all in suspension. So okay, I think I would rather put it as uh, this way. Daytona 675R, the major difference is you have front and back all in suspension fully adjustable compression and rebound damping and even the spring preload adjustment everything is there so so if you see this here you can adjust the spring preload you can adjust the compression damping you can adjust the rebound damping so same as front so front and both fully adjustable all in susp suspension i think this is the ttx 36 I, I forgot the model exact model and uh, i don't know what the front suspensions are but it's from all in that's, that's what i know so this is actually a completely track focused bike guys you can uh, take it to a track it's track ready you can just start belting on a track and start adjusting the suspension according to your requirements so on the 675r what you get additional from the 675 the base 675 is uh, like i said the all in suspension front and rear and the most important thing is the carbon fiber infills carbon fiber uh, infills in the cockpit so if you're uh, seeing this the entire cockpit infills is from carbon fiber this is carbon fiber guys you have the carbon fiber mudguard at the front you have carbon fiber rear hugger or rear mudguard so I think uh, most of the money cost for carbon fiber itself because standard Daytona 675 costs you 10.69 X showroom in India when it was there but 675R costed you 12.15 lakhs X showroom so the on road of a 675R was about 15.5 15.6 so I heard the last Daytona in India was sold for 15.6 lakhs on road 675R uh, so the standard Daytona you can get about 12.3 or 12.5 on road so this one's 15.6 guys it's very expensive I think that's one of the main reason again for people not buying a Daytona so much uh, so if you didn't know Triumph is a UK based company and Daytona is their only super sports for the entire company entire factory triumph uh, Daytona is the only super sports guys there are no other super sports this is the only super sports they make so that's why they've given everything they can the best of their engineering prowess and made a beautiful track focused bike but then i think uh, they could not price it very well because uh, daytonas are very expensive guys in india i think uh, if you add another two lakhs you can get a 200 horsepower motorcycle like the zx 10r so uh, it's the same case everywhere all over the globe daytonas are very expensive so that is the reason i think it did not make too much money for triumph because whatever daytona contributed for the triumph's profit it is nothing actually triumph makes money from street ripples their bond wheels bobbers uh, you know their speedsters roadsters i don't know what they have a lot of uh, other kind of bikes naked bikes street bikes cruisers uh, triumph rocket and stuff so those are the bikes which make money for triumph not the daytona daytona is only for uh, super sport riders like me uh, you know people who like to play around in the track in the canyons in the uh, corners and stuff so not many people will go for for super sports right it's 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 highly uncomfortable look at the seating position of this seat is so high and the clip-ons are so low but that's the way we like it super sport riders like it not everybody so that's the reason daytonas were not selling too much uh, plus like i said they were very expensive so i think that's that's the main reason they pulled the plug off the daytona because anyways it did not matter for triumph too much uh, but if i want to talk about the bike guys it's a beautifully beautifully built bike i mean look at this it's a rock solid build there are no flaws at all not even a single flaw you can uh, uh, you know point out at this bike the fit and finish is so beautiful so perfect i think uh, daytona is the art of perfection I've, i had never seen a daytona up this close until i bought one myself so uh, that's when i thought oh my god uk people they have done a very very wonderful job look at the finishing of this bike 
it feels premium top notch top class high class whatever you call it so the bike's build quality there is no doubt it's a it's a masterpiece guys and talking about the arrow exhaust so the company arrow which makes exhaust systems has tied up with triumph so triumph and arrow they work in collaboration they they make exhausts for their bikes for triumph bikes so this particular one is daytona specific uh, you can't use it on any other bike even if you do use it it won't be so compatible so this is particularly made for a daytona they even give the uh, arrow map along with the exhaust when you add them in triumph uh, showroom uh, they map the bike accordingly so currently my bike is running on uh, arrow exhaust with the arrow map and uh, the speciality of the arrow map is that mine is running on uh, euro map usually the detonas which are sold in india are ara i spec they call it they make 118 horsepower 70.2 nm torque but mine mine is running on euro spec european map european arrow map it makes 126 horsepower 74 nm torque please don't ask me where i got the euro map and stuff it was already there i did not put anything extra uh, when i bought the bike itself it was already running on euro map so that's one speciality about this particular daytona 675r it's running on euro map making the best possible power if you ask me why the difference why uh, india gets arai spec map that's because of the fuel quality we get here so like you saw in the starting of this video i asked the guy for power petrol and he said power petrol we don't have it right now so that's the indian situation guys uh, highly tuned high compression engines uh, they require very high quality fuel high octane fuel so that's the reason triumph decided okay we'll use a slightly detuned uh, map for india because of the fuel quality that's available in india so that's the reason we get arai spec maps and not the euro map euro map gets the best out of this engine makes the maximum power possible so my bike is currently running on that it's very risky actually if i'm not going to use a quality petrol it's very risky to ride this european map because it's gonna if knocking happens inside the engine then I i'm dead guys uh, it's, it's no joke i'll tell you the consequences of using uh, low quality fuel on bikes like this these bikes they use very high compression so the compression ratio of daytona 625r is 13 point one east to one so that's like very high usually zx 10 r s thousand r or any liter class bikes you take they'll have 13 is to one compression even the zx 6 r has 12.9 is to one but this one has 13.1 is to one and v force use a higher compression i'm not talking about v force i'm only talking about inline force so this one's not an inline four this is an inline three that's the speciality of a daytona you don't have any other inline three in the segment we have the mv agusta uh f3 800 but then that's that's an 800 uh, segment uh i think we also have a mv agusta f3 675 which is also inline three but then again we don't take that bike into consideration when we talk about 600 cc legends because it's not a legend mv agusta hardly made any name in the 600 cc segment but it's a good bike i'm not talking about the bike it just it's just not in the list so the bikes which are in the list along with the daytona r r6 zx 6r cbr 600 double r gsxr 600 r and the daytona 675 so cbr 600r r gsxr uh, 600 or gsxr 750 everything is gone and even the daytona is gone so the whole world has only the r6 and the zx6r right now so daytona you can only find a used bike you can't get a new bike anymore of course they launched the 765 uh, series daytona now the nearest to moto 2 but then that's a 765 that does not belong to 600 cc category that's a different level altogether so that was something about the 600 uh, segment guys so what else is left i don't know if i want to talk about the dash because um, there are too many things in the dash i haven't gone through the manual yet trust me i'm so busy just look at the dash so there are plenty of things in this guys uh, there are lots of features uh, I, I, I can put it to circuit mode lap timing mode i can switch the abs off so yes this thing has a switchable abs uh, i can set the rev lights according to my requirements i have not touched anything since i bought the bike i have uh, hardly gone through the manual yet so i have to do that when i get time so 
those things i'm not going to show you because there are plenty of videos on it already but what i will show you definitely is the adjustment of the front and rear suspension because i have to adjust i don't know what settings they are in uh, previous owner might might have made his own settings but then i have to make my own settings now so also guys some people were asking me to add a steering dampener because it it gets highly unstable at uh, very high speeds because the acceleration is so much that the front wheel starts lifting off the ground uh, also if you didn't know uh, daytona does not have riding modes it does not have power modes uh, it does not have traction control either only dual channel abs is standard you get a quick shifter so if you see here this is the quick shifter guys it's from triumph only for upshifts not the downshifts because this thing does not have a uh, ride by wire uh, technology so for the people who asked me to put a steering dampener it's already there guys so daytona's get a steering dampener under the uh, front forks or front clip on so what do you call it so if you see there so do you see that there that is the steering dampener uh, daytona get similar to s1000 rrs even the bmw s1000 rrs get similar type of uh, uh, you know steering dampener under the uh, front clip ons or under the tank or i don't know i don't know where you call that and if i want to talk about the intake so this is where the intake is this is where the all the wind goes inside and then directly hits the air box so daytona uses a forced air injection uh, fai they call it forced air injection that is the reason you get that whistling sound so as the, as you accelerate the forced air injector uh, it's like a supercharger guys i not exactly a supercharger but then electronically induced that's why you get the whistle sound also uh, daytona has a secondary air injector say they call it sai uh, to burn the unburnt fuel that comes out of the engine to the uh, you know exhaust system so that's why you get that uh, rattling or cutting sound in the exhaust because there is secondary air injection uh, to burn the unburnt fuel i think that's pretty much it if you want to know anything specific about the daytona please uh, leave a comment i'll try to answer it so there are premium components used in the bike see everything you see these things are aluminium this is aluminium even the stand is aluminium uh, the entire front clip ons it's aluminium the components they've used on this bike is top quality guys that is the reason it costs you so much the bike does not rust easily because it's not simple cast iron they've used everywhere there are uh, many components many mixed alloys they've used the wheels are aluminium alloys to give it the least inertia possible so what else is there guys so colors for the 675 r i'm not talking about the base model 675 base model 675 gets a uh, red color i think and uh, i don't know what other colors base model has but the 675 r has only two colors uh, this is the crystal white and the other one is the phantom black so only two colors and you get this red subframe so this is what differentiates from uh, 675 to 675R even in the black color uh, phantom black uh, color variant you get this red subframe so that's when you know this is an R so okay if you want to hear the exhaust ones let's do this so you have to hold the clutch though it's in neutral you have to hold the clutch do you hear that whistle and the bass because of the arrow so sweet boy so sweet okay let's not make too much noise because people might gather so currently the front headlights are in low beams so in the low beams uh, always the right right side of the lights will be on uh, let me turn the high beams on so this is high beams guys full light look at that light fury light it up beautiful sounding motorcycle <laughs> very nice
so i had to make this video because i never uh, told you anything about my bike in any of the videos since i bought the daytona so there you go that's about my uh, daytona 625r if you have any specific questions or i i might have left out uh, some important stuff uh, you know no, i can't remember everything guys though i do a little preparation before the video uh, i might forget few things so if you have any particular questions please ask me in the comment section below that's about it you guys take care peace